Hey everybody, I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because there's just so much information out there. But uh, I am, let's see, Wednesday, I'm counting all of Wednesday because I did this in the morning. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I am on my sixth day since this injury happened. So uh, this is, I, I injured my shoulder mountain biking on Wednesday. And this is what it looks like. This is my right shoulder. Um, now, let's take a journey, actually. Three years ago, almost to the day, uh, I got in a mountain biking accident and separated my left shoulder. And you can see I got some damage there, some scrapes. I slid for quite a ways. Uh, there's pretty good bruising here. This was a rough one. Uh, I was going at a pretty good speed, maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour. And a rock got wedged up in my front fork and I flipped over my bike and I landed on this shoulder and I slid for, it felt like ever, but maybe five, 10 yards. Um, had good gashes and, and uh, scrapes and of course this separated shoulder. So that's me in the chair the next day. And here's an x-ray. Actually, oh, here we go. I skipped a slide. So uh, this is what I look like. Uh, could barely get over to the side in time. You see that huge gash in my leg. I had some really bad scrapes on my arm. My brother had the mind to take a picture of me and show what I look like. So that's July 27, 2019. So I went to the uh, Instacare and got an x-ray of both my shoulders. And so you can see a clear difference between the two of them. And on the le uh, right side over here, uh, this is this gap here is where you have a ligament and you also have a ligament that attaches from your scapula to your well actually i'm sorry it's it's all your scapula but uh this uh there's a one that goes here one that goes here and i think there's another one but over here they're all separated there's nothing there and your collarbone is fixed in its fixed spot but uh the shoulder drops and that's where you get this protrusion right so if your shoulder your shoulder's hanging on to your collarbone and your collarbone, you didn't realize this, is, is uh, working in tandem with your muscles to hold, suspend your shoulder in, in place. So you get this nasty bump. Uh, other things to know, well, let's just move on. So uh, I decided uh, that I wanted to do surgery ASAP. The doctor pretty much recommended it. Uh, he did not recommend waiting and seeing or like trying to rehab it. Uh, he felt that it was bad enough to, to do it. And he got me into surgery pretty quickly. I assume he, I was at the end of the day. So I assume he kind of just threw me in onto a schedule, even though he probably planned to be done by that, that time. Um, and so I went in, got surgery and this was me the next day on the right here. Um, there were a lot of problems I had with the surgery. Uh, I was in a mental fog for several days and uh, my shoulder was in, of course, a lot of pain. The first day I got a nerve block that uh, numbed my entire arm. Uh, I had no feeling in the whole arm. And so that went okay. But, you know, I mean, my mind was just not well. I was nauseous, uh, not necessarily a problem with the shoulder surgeon. It's more the anesthesiologist. And so when they talk about complications, just know that, yeah, it could be infection, it could be uh, breaking, but it could also just be like your mental health just going downhill. Uh, so for, that's four days after my injury. So I'm already a day older with my most recent shoulder surgery. So this, this again is my left arm. Um, and I mean, they just had me ice it 20, for 24 hours. I uh, couldn't get it wet, uh, stuck in that chair pretty much the whole time. Um, had a hard time. Uh, folk, like I, I just felt sick all the time. My mind just was awful. So that definitely plays a part into my decision now. Uh, I actually had a plan to go through surgery for my right shoulder and stay awake the entire time. Uh, that was my initial thought, but uh, some things had have led me to maybe not do that this time. Um, this is me, I think, a week after. So I got my patch off and I could finally shower, although I almost passed out here because I just, 
seeing it just made me grossed out. I just felt super gross. I want you to notice that when you have your arm in a sling, the shoulder that is supporting your other arm gets offset. It's higher because I, it just it just is. Uh, it uh, requires strength of the shoulder to support this one, and so you see a dramatic shift in my shoulder height. So that was also confusing and a little weird. So uh, anyway, so this is me a week after, uh, almost passed out, but good good stitching job. Um, internal stitching, didn't have to go back for removal, nothing like that. And this is what it looked like. So I had a lockdown surgery. This is where they have the screw insert, inserted into your clavicle uh, horizontally, and they wrap it with uh, a ligament that goes around it. There's plenty of YouTube videos you can go watch, but uh, yeah, so that's what that looks like. I've got it in me now. And uh, I don't know if you could tell, but they cut off the end of your clavicle uh, for many reasons. My doctor cited uh, preventing future arthritis, but uh, you know, no, who knows? So that's what that looks like. All right, and again, that's my left shoulder. And um, oh, just for comparison, so before, after. Right, you see that they cut it off, like where, where this one has kind of like a diagonal slant here, this one's straight up and down. So they, they hack it off. Um, there's no tendon regrowth there. So, um, well, maybe I'll get to it later, maybe I won't, but I'll, I'll say that uh, some doctors will say it really doesn't matter when you do the surgery because, because of this, they cut this off here. Uh, sure, there'll be scar tissue that forms with your, uh, um, clavicle up and elevated in, in a way, but that can always be removed. Okay. And just as far as like hardship goes, like dealing with the shoulder is enough on its own, but then you think about your life around you and like life doesn't just stop, like things still happen. So we, we were mudding our kitchen and so, and it was, it took three weeks longer than it was supposed to. And uh, so that's what our house looked like. And then our lawn started to flood because we had a busted water main. So uh, we we had several mis misfortunes at this time. And then also my wife is pregnant and what she was doing in uh, two months. So that made my timing super stressed out. And uh, I didn't know. I don't know if I really wanted to wait and see for this to, to heal, because if it didn't, then I was out of time. Um, also, we, we, we went to Hawaii. Uh, we, we had plane tickets and everything. So I got surgery ASAP. This was the last week that I was wearing the sling, but uh, I was still pretty cautious with it. Still hurt a little bit to travel and walk around and hit bumps, things like that. But uh, I ultimately, I got in the water and did some snorkeling. That felt good. Um, but it was difficult to uh, try to catch my balance getting in and out of the water. But uh, this was okay to do. I feel I asked my doctor. He said it was okay just to... Uh, to keep it still. So fast forward to now. Well, guess what? Oh, sorry. Let's, let's not let's fast forward yet. So September 4th, this is uh, about five weeks since my, that surgery. Um, I couldn't really raise my arm above my head and I wasn't allowed to bear any weight. So it uh, was mostly useless. But uh, this is me, September 7th. I could at least bend it 90 degrees, hold things with it that were light and uh, just harvest season so we're harvesting zucchinis at this time and then october 7th my beautiful daughter was born and i had a five pound weight limit uh about 85 to 90 percent range of motion pain sleeping on the side and i had some numbness and sensitivity around my surgical site um and i can't say that it's really ever fully returned but you know it's fine i don't think about it uh, this is four months after my surgery. There's a YouTube video that I have that maybe I'll link to at the bottom here. And uh, I say here that I have 90% range of motion. I don't have anybody to tell me exactly what range of motion I have, but still have numb numbness. I uh, could not do squats. It was just too uncomfortable. And then um, I had just new shoulder sensations, you know, and it never goes back to the way it was. So with surgery, you're not going to feel normal. That's if they say that you're going to feel 100% normal, they're lying to you. Um, you'll just get used to it. And that's the real, the real key there. Um, and the, the problem with squats was this. And I, three years later, you know, months ago, I realized that 
it was better if I held grip the bar a little bit further out. So right now my hands are close to my shoulders in this picture, but if I made the V a little wider, that made it more comfortable to do squats with my injury. That's nine months out. And uh, two years ago or a year ago, I decided, I think I'm good to start mountain biking again. I'd be extra cautious. And that's my daughter on my bike with me. But I uh, was going down a, another trail that I've ridden dozens and dozens of times, maybe even a hundred times. And uh, this was a new spot and this hole had opened up and I went right into it. This is somebody else's video, but I went right into it. My bike went to the left and I went to the right. And as soon as I hit the ground, I knew exactly what I had done and I couldn't believe it. And I'd done it to my other shoulder. So I immediately thought I'm going to do surgery because that's what I did last time. I'm happy with the results enough, happy enough. I at least know what to expect. And so that's what I'm going to do. Uh, so I had a fanny pack as a sling and I walked the rest of the way down. I had a Samaritan help me get the sling on, but then I, I walked the rest of the way down. My uh, niece came and grabbed the bike from me and we walked together about a third of the way the rest of the way. Um, And we, I went home, got, uh, got into the surgeon the next day. And this time his tune was a little bit different. Um, he said, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's basically the same as last time. Great. Or he didn't tell me the grade, but he said, uh, got a complete separation with a slight posterior angle. Uh, whereas last time there was more of an angle, he said. So anyway, he just said, we you know, we could try to treat it conservatively for a few weeks. Uh, I think six weeks was four to six weeks and see how it progresses. And then we can decide to do surgery later. And I was like, well, do you have any appointments tomorrow? Like I wanted to get it done. I don't want to wait. And uh, he said, well, I, I can't get you in for at least another two weeks, two and a half weeks. So I thought, okay, here's the deal. I'm going to Hawaii again. I am. Uh, we are pregnant again. And I don't want to push this off more than I have to. And where I'm going to be two weeks into my recovery, maybe I do just see how this goes. Because if this is simply a grade three, and that's the problem is like, we can't, it's hard to say exactly what you have, but uh, except for what you can go off of on x-rays, you really start to figure it out when you start doing pain assessments several weeks later, like motion, range of motion and things like that. Um, but from the x-ray, it just looks like a classic grade three. And from my fall, from sensations I feel this time versus last time, it doesn't feel as severe. And it's debatable whether I should have or needed surgery last time anyway. So um, here is what I look like post-accident. Uh, it's pretty, pretty dramatic separation, it looks like there. But I, I think I have some pretty intense swelling. Um, my shoulder doesn't quite look that bad right now. It's taped up, as you can see. Uh, and, of course, you can see my scar from the last surgery. And that's what it looks like. This is what it looks like top down or axillary. Um, and this is, okay, so I'm going to try to trace it, but this is all your scapula. So, uh, sorry, I might have traced that a little too wide, but, um, and then this over top of it is your clavicle. And it's kind of fuzzed out here, but your your scapula and your, oops, your clavicle. You know, well, here's the side. This is your scapula and your clavicle right here, right? So if we go back, um, you kind of see it wraps around here. Um, and as far as I could tell and a few other surgeon friends, yes, I have friends that are surgeons, uh, or in sports, like the, do the shoulders. Uh, it does not look like it's too far. It doesn't look displaced that way or that way. And of course, uh, uh, as far as up and down goes, it doesn't look like a, a five or a six. So could it, could it have been a four, uh, based on this, it doesn't seem like that's the case, but, uh, you know, it's impossible to say for real, for sure. So, um, the question is, uh, 
surgery, no surgery. I mean, that's everybody's question. And unfortunately, you if you sample a thousand people, so a good sample size, you're going to get a 50% response that says yes, 50% response that says no for grade grade three-ish. I'll say grade three. Uh, if you have grade four, five, six, those are rare, but um, almost everybody's unanimous in saying yes. Uh, but for grade three, it's it feels like 50-50. And it, I would say it doesn't matter if you ask a surgeon, a physical therapist, somebody who's had the separation, somebody who... Uh, actually, I'll, I'll leave it at those three people. I think it's 50-50. Um, I've talked to people... Okay, so I've talked to three surgeons. Uh, one said go, could go either way. One said could go either way, but don't wait six months, which is actually one of my ideas is to maybe do this later. Uh, and then another surgeon who says, you're fine. I mean, yeah, you're going to cosmetically, it's going to look weird, but I think you'll get come out of this just fine. Um, they see hockey players all the time that don't get the surgery. And uh, there may be some issues down the road, but uh, I'd rather deal with that later. And who, who knows, like there's going to be issues, I think, regardless. So um, anyway, uh, then I asked some physical therapists. The first one I asked said, you're just going to have to wait and see. Then I asked another who said virtually the same thing, but both were pretty. So the first, uh, the first physical therapist I asked said, if it's a four through six, they almost always go in for surgery. A one through three, it, uh, or for a three, it, usually we see some good success with physical therapy. Uh, but from their standpoint, they don't look at an x-ray and say, you've got a grade three. They say, come in, let's do some range of motion pain assessments, and we'll tell you what you have based on those pains. And uh, in some ways, that might be more sure than anything else. But uh, the second physical therapist personally asked said uh, that uh, waiting could have some uh, negative effects on your uh, physical therapy, you could have frozen shoulder and it could, you know, if you get stuck with it, uh, it doesn't get better the longer you wait. So um, yeah, that was their thoughts on waiting. But also they, I think they had uh, good things to say about physical therapy for grade threes. And then uh, the people I've asked who have had grade three separations, um, one said that, uh, I mean, they can pretty much do whatever they want. Uh, they just, like, if they want to learn how to relearn how to throw a ball, they're going to have to relearn. Like it's not the same as before. Um, one said that they don't really n notice day-to-day -day problems, but they physically see it. And that's really the only thing that they've noticed. Um, it really just depends. Our bones are all different. Uh, what, how, how much they rub into each other and, uh, where they line up is all going to be different. So it's hard to get a single answer what's right for you. So my my problem is the luxury of time, right? I don't have the luxury of time. My kids are very dependent on their parents. And so it's very difficult for me to be inactive and making my wife do everything. And so where we have a newborn on the way, that definitely affects my decision. Uh, and going to Hawaii also affects my decision. But almost in a good way, because Hawaii is about five weeks out. And I want to give my body time to recover and do the physical therapy to put in that work and build a platform for my shoulder to recover. Um, when I did the surgery, I had several months to work on it after. And it's it, it comes in waves. I mean, your progression takes time. Like four months later, I still feel, I'm still feeling some issues and um, I still can't do certain things and wearing a backpack sucks, but even today it sucks. I don't like it. So, you know, I mean, it's only fair that apples to apples, uh, you compare the two. Um, the literature does suggest that I found that, uh, uh, you have, uh, less time off of work. And I think the reason for that is because you got to, go into surgery, and then you're immobile for four weeks. Like that's your protocols. You keep it in a sling for four weeks. You don't start rehabbing it. Whereas with with uh, AC separation, um, it's kind of similar. Well, no, it's not similar. They 
it depends on who you ask, but some will say, don't start rehab till two and a half weeks. Some say, wait a week. Some say, start immediately. Um, and I can go over like where I've seen all of those things. But um, I have decided to go off of mostly, let's see if I can find it. This one, I thought that this was a fair summary of everything that I had seen which basically says, uh, although sling use up to four weeks following grade three AC separations has been previously reported, patients should be encouraged to cease sling use as soon as their symptoms allow. Uh, the AC joint functions primarily through movement of the acromion and the stable strut of the clavicle producing motion that contributes to the shoulder mobility. So um, yeah, so I'm kind of subscribing to that and I can let my arm hang and it's really not too bad. So i um, choosing to go that route because I, I really want to avoid frozen shoulder for sure. Uh, but there are several uh, articles that go over treatment options and what you can expect. Um, I really like this one, taping the shoulder, some good evidence there to do that. They, they, this person said they waited a full week before they were leaving the arm sling, but they also had some intense <laughs> rehab uh, Um, intense rehab ideas. I mean, they they were doing uh, electrotherapy, I think is what I read, soft tissue therapy, prophylactic taping, and um, oh, active release technique. A lot of things that I'm probably not going to do. So um, anyway, I'm not really sure. But uh, yeah, so uh, they had some good success and um, this is their regiment. I believe this is one week after, so days one through three is actually days eight through 10. So I'm going to basically wait to do a lot of this for another few days. I am letting my arm hang. I'm letting it uh, do the pendulum swinging, uh, but very, very gently, just trying to, trying to get the scar tissue to form in a way that's conducive to healing. So that's my approach. Uh, I want to give updates as time goes on, but uh, we'll see how this goes. I'll be the human AB test. I believe that the results will be comparable, and I can for uh, I can definitively say what uh, what the right thing is to do. So maybe I can get you to fifty-one, forty-nine percent. You know, one way or the other.